Hey everybody, I have here the Lego Disney Pixar Lightyear Movie XL15 Spaceship. I got this for $50 US and did not build it live over on Twitch. This one I actually did on the Pure Builds channel. This set comes with three figures, one animal, a laptop computer, and the spaceship itself on a stand. They present it almost like an Ultimate Collector Series set. Let me just first show you what the whole thing looks like from some, some different angles. You see, it's even at an angle, so it's kind of facing towards you, which is just extra, extra nice for an, for an absolutely regular, normal retail set that's not too expensive either. You know, they really definitely tried to, to give this a little, a little something extra to make it last longer and to make owners of the kit more proud. Here's a closer look at the plaque, which is one large sticker on our ramp piece. And since I mentioned peace, let me get straight to this. The most highly anticipated new part that's included in this set. This is a new mold of windshield piece, and it's done in just a plain trans yellow, which is perfect for all the fans of classic space. It's not just the, the X-Wing design. It's lengthened. It has just a single facet going all the way down here. There's a little bit, there's a little bit of top flat right here, but for the most part, you know, it's very clear and straightforward in how it presents, although it does have a little extra space on the side, depending upon how this is used, but definitely a highly sought after part already. Uh, it actually doesn't close up, sometimes it doesn't close up 100% down here, but you have to just kind of push this down, uh, just to make sure that it's all uh, tightened, tightened up. Really quickly talking about special parts. I am skipping around a little bit, but I wanted to point this out just to let you see that this is a differential housing piece. So it uses three bevel gears compared to the traditional two, but it makes for a really nice bit of part usage specifically for these engine outlets. And I think maybe, yeah, I think, I think that's about the best way to, to look at it, but these do spin freely. Uh, so if you see those misaligned, that's why. Okay, let's talk about the, the design of this thing overall. It is beautiful and it is a very interesting build. This is dark azure through here. Got the stacked plates with sizes, shapes of plates that have not been available in these colors before. A uh, little bit of studs on the side construction, a bunch of diagonal building as well. These wings are angled at a, an unusual angle, you know, just not something that you normally see from, from Lego. They are locked together with Technic pins in from the sides. Down below, more interesting part usage. I'll go ahead and pull this off of its stand now. More interesting part usage down here with these pieces that are axle holders for the Lego City ATVs and small off-road vehicles to allow them to, to steer and also articulate a little bit. Now these pods here are in at an interesting angle. They just barely fit in. What I am most impressed about with this entire build though, is how little gappiness you will see. So down in here, even though there's some really strange angles, like this goes directly, this is straight. This is actually 90 degrees to this plane right here, but the way that it's attached is rather different. They fill in these gaps here with the cheese slopes, fill in gaps right there with the cheese slopes. Very nice. This does have a bunch of stickers used in it, but I think it's to good effect. And if you really hate stickers, you can easily leave those off. You've got some nice striping in here that's all done with just traditional pieces as opposed to using stickers or prints. There are a bunch of transparent pieces that are hidden inside, sometimes used as gap fillers just for the, the building process. Overall, the number of studs that are left exposed here is rather small. Engine intakes do have a little suggestion of a, a vein, a separator vein there, a splitter sort of element, I think, with the use of the the relatively new uh, full thickness, full plate thickness bracket there. Uh, I think these are both new in this color, the dark azure color. It's a full length bar inside of there. It's just, there's so much good about this. It's difficult to kind of get started. <laughs> Honestly, to kind of get started just talking about it because I just want to talk about absolutely everything immediately. Uh, this opens up back here. This opens up here, so you get access to some storage space. Uh, you can put a power cell down in there. I don't know the exact proper term for it, but there's a little bit of storage space. If there's anything that I wish there was more of with this set, it's storage space. You know, I wish that this had a four stud wide cargo area. It almost feels like it could, but it just doesn't, doesn't quite. 
but you do have some room in there. Oh, all, also interestingly, dark gray, this piece right here. Dark gray, I don't think I've seen that. I might have seen it once in dark gray before. The inside of the cockpit is really interesting. It's a little bit difficult to see here, but that's a printed piece. That triang triangle two by two uh, tile is a printed console. I don't know why they did that as a print, but they did the, the little bits you can see decorations off to the sides are stickers. But a print there, uh, yeah, don't mind it, but it's, it's just an odd choice. Flight yoke there is a ball joint piece, so you can angle that off to one side to make it look a little bit more realistic. There's room for a single human pilot, and you can also put maybe perhaps a small animal behind there, and we'll be talking about that and looking at that later on. Just uh, swooshability, of course, is is fine. I mean, it, it, it is just, it's just a Lego thing, you know? like whatever, whatever you want. It's not that big, right? So swishability, of course, was never going to be an issue with this. But with those strange angles, they are anch anchored together in ways that are not going to let go. They are fully pinned in twice as much as they even need to be to hold the angle. So this is actually surprisingly strong for how advanced of a build it is in spite of its small size. So a lot of nice part usage here, a lot of good angles, just in general, this turns out pretty dang fantastic and uh, definitely will be inspiring a lot more custom builds, a lot more designs that, you know, just kind of riff on this idea and maybe use some of its techniques, certainly some of its parts. Just there's very little that I can find to say bad about this at all. Doesn't have landing skids per se, but it just goes on the ground. That's that's fine. And then with the stand, you can also orient it this way to make it look like it's flying off away from you. You know, it's just another option. Of course, you can you know, figure out what you want. You want to go off this way. Didn't try this though. I'm going to see if it can be coming down towards me without the nose actually touching the ground. Pick the correct spot. Yes, that actually does work. There's just a, oh, oh, there's too much weight. There's too much weight. I can just barely get it to work, so you can kind of display it this way, but you might want to add a little bit more weight to the back of the stand to get that to work. But you do have some options there. Looking at figures here on the left is Buzz Lightyear, in the middle is Mo Morrison, and on the right is Darby Steele, already from the first trailer for the movie, which is all that we have to go off. Uh, you can tell that these are going to be presented as like robots or as, uh, you know, just evil, evil foot soldiers. And very quickly, they're going to all team up. They're going to work together against the real evil that's out there. Really nice helmet design here. Really great to be able to get that as an option. I do hope that they will keep that mold alive and make it available in other colors in the future. Nice accessory builds. This right here is with the crystal inside is a printed one by one, an exclusive printed one by one with good printing on it on both sides as well. It has that same print from the other side and is a nice small build. The weapons are also built up pretty nicely and they're not too huge for figures, a little bit, a little bit oversized, but you know, not too huge. I think they, I think they work out okay. Uh, different, different molds for this piece here, the armor piece, the upper armor piece, which can also hold on to something on the back with the two studs there. And underneath, we got the balaclava version of Buzz Lightyear. Alternate face for only one of these. Too bad we didn't get an alternate face here as well. I don't know what the, what the decision-making process was there, but I want you to see what those faces look like there. Printing for Buzz Lightyear's face could have been a little bit better, but it's not too bad. You know, the skin tone, it doesn't let too much blue through, thankfully. And then he also has the balaclava off version of the head included, and we get hair pieces for these two over here. And there's more. That's not that's not the end of it. Just hold on. Like this is this is good, you know, to be able to show the the full figures, the full characters, alternate face right here, and then finally, way a, a hair piece for Buzz Lightyear. Helmet off, you know, partially unsuited to show him just more normal. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. That doesn't really look like him anymore to me. I don't think that's the best face choice for him. But look at those prints for the torsos and the armor pieces. There's a lot of detail. Probably more than there needs to be, but I'm not complaining. Very, very massable things they are. You know, these could easily be used by custom builders way outside of this theme. 
Also included is Socks, which is not a real cat. It's a robotic cat. We've already seen that from the trailer. This is not the best looking one. Like the color is good. The color on there is nice and everything, but the eyes though, the eyes are too small. It's just kind of a traditional design of face here. I feel like they needed to do that differently. The eyes needed to be much bigger and much more just exaggerated to better match the, the on-screen representation. I think it would have been a, a better choice. And then the, the computer is set up via a book. It's just a white book. This is a print, which is standard for Lego City and other things. But then for this set in particular, they got the sticker to represent the screen. But this all just closes up and both of these will fit into the spaceship. These are the leftover parts and I'm especially glad to get one of these extra in the dark gray. And the sticker sheet is unusually large, mostly because it has that large plaque sticker. Also, these ones for the tail tend to take up a lot of space here. Mm, this didn't feel that bad to me. Again, if you hate stickers, you can leave off probably most of these and it'll still look like a good kit, good model when it's done. All right, so that pretty much brings us down to a discussion about price and value. Again, this was $50.50 US. And frankly, that's a lot of money for just a single seat, little starship, three minifigures. It's, it's a lot. However, it's very close, I feel, in terms of value for amount of stuff to the most recent scaled down Boba Fett starship. Uh, if you're familiar with the Star Wars side of things, and this is also a, a licensed kit here. And that one I felt pretty okay with, even though it was small, because it's so good. I feel similar here, you know? It's one thing to, to not feel good about the ever-increasing prices of things, or to not feel good specifically about the ever-increasing seeming prices of Lego sets, for their size. Yeah, they're increasing in detail and everything, but ultimately, you know, you're seeing prices go up and up and set sizes go down and down and down. But at least, at least if I can feel good about what I got, I can mentally justify higher prices better. And the fact is, this is a fantastic set. It is so dang good, so dang good. The figures are very good also, but I'm mostly into the builds and this is, this, I 100% stamp of approval for this. Again, I wish that there was more room for cargo in there, but I, 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 can totally, I can totally live with that. It's overbuilt. It's so detailed. It's so unique. I think it captures the in-universe things very, very well. New canopy mold. Not that this is the only set that we're ever going to use that on, but still, I appreciate it, you know? There's, there's a heck of a lot good here. So, yes, it is expensive. I would like this to be $35 to $40, $40 tops, honestly. Mm, even that's pushing it. With the stand though, okay, I'll allow $40 tops. It is actually 50, that is too much, but no matter what, forget about this whole reviewing thing, forget about this whole channel. I would buy this for myself. Matter of fact, I did buy another one just for myself case I wanted to do something a little different with it or something separate from this you know like I I personally really really like this I don't care what anybody else thinks I don't care what anybody else wants to hear about it I'm happy with this and I don't feel dirty for having paid 50 bucks I think I've said enough though I think you I think you've heard where I where I come from on this now hope that I showed you everything well enough to help you to arrive at your own conclusions to figure out whether you think this is worth it or not. And I will keep working to bring you ever more reviews here on this channel, more builds, hopefully more on the Pure Builds channel as well, and also live over on Twitch. More other contents, just keep going, going, going. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.